instructions, obviously, as we all kind of continue to learn this virtual world. If everybody could keep their mic muted, please. We will try to leave some time at the end for questions. We have a very limited time frame for those. Please make sure you're typing those questions. I will read them aloud. Um, we do have, of course, the pool camera in here for the media. We will arrange to make sure everybody gets those links. Um, but again, just please make sure you can type the questions at any point, um, and I will make sure to read them, direct them to the right people. If we do run out of time for those questions, please just send them to me. I'll get them to the right people, and we will try to make sure you all get what you need. So order of speakers today, um, we are going to have the acting United States Attorney Antoinette Bacon. We are going to have FBI Assistant Special Agent in Charge Peter Magneto. We have the President of the Massa Foundation, Roger Strauch. And we have the Executive Director and Curator um, from the Arkell Museum, Sue Friedlander. Um, and then again, I will come up to facilitate some of those questions, but again, we'll just try to keep those as minimal as possible. So without further ado, I will introduce Acting United States Attorney, Antoinette Bacon. Good morning. I am humbled and honored every single day to be serving as the acting United States Attorney here in the Northern District of New York. It's an honor and it's a responsibility. It's a responsibility to ensure that justice is done every single day. That injustices do not stand no matter how long ago they were committed. And to try to restore the sense of justice to victims and to survivors. I feel that every day and I feel that in every single case. And today I am thrilled that we are able to provide a measure of restitution to the Mossa family who suffered a great injustice many years ago. Rudolph Mossa, his daughter and her husband operated a well-known and a successful publishing company in Berlin in the early 20th century. They were Jewish, and the Nazi party targeted them for who they were and for the negative press in their newspapers. Faced with imminent persecution, the Mosses fled Germany, leaving all of their property, including an extensive art collection. The Nazis then essentially confiscated all of the Moss's family property, including this portrait, Winter. Members of the Mossa family made their way here to America, and coincidentally, so did Winter. The injustices of the Holocaust are beyond comprehension. I can't even begin to describe them adequately. No one can restore the lives, the families, and the communities that the Nazis destroyed. There is no such thing as just compensation for the survivors of the Holocaust. The Mossa family lost nearly everything because they were Jews, but they did not lose hope, and neither did the Department of Justice. The FBI has a program dedicating to finding and returning stolen art and cultural property. And Winter is one of the latest examples of the FBI's success. We are delighted today to return Winter to its rightful owners. While this certainly does not take away the pain that the Mosses has endured, I hope it provides the family with some measure of justice. And it should also serve as a reminder to crime victims that the Department of Justice is committed to doing its very best to secure restitution, no matter how long that might take. I would like to thank the FBI, Curator Susan Friedlander for her cooperation with the FBI and the museum's prompt release of winter to the FBI, and Assistant United States Attorney Chris Moran, who litigated this case. Your collective efforts made today possible. And now it's my pleasure to introduce the Assistant Special Agent in Charge of the FBI, Pete Magneto. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, thank you, ma'am. I appreciate that. And uh, thank you to your office. As always, the partnership with the Northern District of New York is phenomenal. And specifically, thank you to AUSA Chris Moran for his outstanding partnership in this case as well. I think it's also important to uh, thank the Massa Foundation for being here today and for Susan Freelander for being here. As uh, Sarah had mentioned earlier, Susan is the executive director and chief curator at the Arkell Museum. Thank you to you both for your partnership. I think it's important to note that this case would not have been possible, this day would not have been possible without the extraordinarily hard work and dedication of FBI Special Agent Joanne Sills, of FBI Task Force Officer Gary McMullen from the Albany County Sheriff's Office, and from FBI Special Agent Chris McHugh, who is a member of the FBI's elite art crime unit based out of our New York City office. Their phenomenal hard work over many months in partnerships with the U.S. Attorney's Office and our private sector partners made this day possible and I appreciate all your hard work. I think it's truly remarkable to be standing here today to discuss the FBI's involvement in this inspiring international effort to locate and return this stolen artwork, stolen during that evil period when the Nazis were across Europe. I think it is unbelievable to look at the hard work, strong efforts, and tireless dedication of the FBI and the U.S. Attorney's Office to recover this artwork and to right a wrong that occurred so many years ago during World War II. While the FBI believes hundreds of thousands of pieces of art were stolen by the Nazis during that period, our office the FBI Albany office, is extremely proud to write even just this one wrong done during this evil period of history. We, admit, we may have played just a small role in this effort, but we will forever recognize the magnitude of this work, and we are truly honored to be able to return this painting to its rightful owners. Today certainly marks an incredible end to a chapter uh, for winter, but it's exciting to know its extraordinary story will be uh, used by the Masa Foundation in its continued efforts to track these stolen pieces of art and ensure their return to their rightful owners. And on that note, I think this is a good point in time to turn this over and introduce Roger Strauch, who is the president of the Masa Foundation. And I think Roger, he's going to explain a little bit more about the Massa family, where it represents uh, the great work that they're doing across the globe, and perhaps Robert, Roger, a little more information about the future of winter. Thank you. Roger, it's all yours. Thank you so much. Very much. Well, I'm Roger Stroke. I am the step-great-grandson of Rudolf Massa, the German industrialist and philanthropist who amassed the collection of objects for which we are searching. I'm also the leader of the Massa Art Restitution Project. 87 and a half years ago, this painting in front of you, painted in the late 19th century by Melcher, was expropriated from the Berlin-based Massa family only a couple of months after Hitler assumed power in Germany in 1933. Goebbels and Goering themselves were intimately involved in orchestrating the looting and monetizing of this family's assets. It was one of the first large expropriations undertaken by the Nazis, a template for what became, unfortunately, a well-oiled machine. I believe the painting was purchased by Mr. Arkell in 1934 and has been the family and the since. The Massa Art Restitution Initiative, led by Dr. Mike Pop in Berlin, located and validated the provenance of the painting within the last couple of years, and we approached 
the Office of the United States Attorney and the Federal Bureau of Investigation to ensure an orderly and lawful transfer of ownership to the rightful owners, the Mata heirs. Now, why did, and we've heard some reference already from U.S. Attorney um, Bacon, uh, why the Hitler targeted the Massa family. Over 120 years ago, the Massa family was one of the most prominent and well-off families in Berlin. Rudolf had built a print media and advertising empire. He owned the Berliner Tagblatt, which we could think of as the New York Times of Germany. It was the country's leading progressive voice. The paper was outspoken in its criticism of the rise of the Nazi movement. In fact, Hitler and Goebbels publicly vilified the Mosta family more than 20 times, probably more than any other single Jewish family. So let me tell you a little bit about this restitution project for which I'm responsible. Over 1,000 objects have been identified as Masa looted art and artifacts on the internet on the site lostart.de, including a Gainsborough, for example, and a Lieber. This project for which I'm responsible commenced in 2011. We have professional investigators in the US and the United States, Europe, and Asia. We have attorneys in San Francisco and Berlin. We've collaborated with over a dozen, closely collaborated with over a dozen professional provenance researchers. We have successfully completed three dozen restitutions recovering over 50 Masa art items and artifacts. From custodians, including public and private museums and private individuals in Germany, Austria, Switzerland, Israel, and the United States. Most of these objects have been sold back to the custodians or sold at auction. The Melcher that you see in front of you, Winter, will likely be sold at auction through Sotheby's within the next several months. The total value of these transactions has been in the millions of dollars. And oh, by the way, I received no personal compensation for my efforts, and I'm not an heir. But I do represent three heirs, a private individual, the University of Wisconsin-Madison, and the Massa Foundation. And the Massa Foundation is an active philanthropic organization for which my brother and I are responsible. We support arts and education projects and, in, and institutions in active uh, philanthropic programs. Currently, we have eight ongoing restitution claim efforts in Poland, Sweden, Germany, Israel, and the United States. I'd like to take a moment to offer some sincere thanks to the people who made this day possible after all these years. Well, of course, thank you to the speaker who preceded me, the Assistant Special Agent in Charge, Mr. Magneto, and the U.S. Attorney, Tony Bacon, for your leadership. And thank you so much, Assistant U.S. Attorney Chris Moran, for your tenacity, your integrity, your skills, your public service, along with your partners that I'll recognize in a moment. Um, it's, a play, it's been an honor to work with you and your team. And thank you to your team to include, as already mentioned, Special Agents Chris McHugh and Joanne Sills and Task Officer Gary McMullen. I can tell you that we, uh, we really admire the service of, our, um, of the FBI and the U.S. Attorney's Office, and we're grateful 
that you pay attention uh, and apply your skills and talent to the recovery of stolen property, as in this case. We'd also like to acknowledge Guidepost Solutions, a prominent investigation and security services, Bart Schwartz and Steve Sokolow. Our law firm, Bart Zankel, Bartko Zankel, and our attorney, John Bartko, and the project's lead project manager and chief investigator, Eric Bartko. Our attorneys in Berlin, Jan Hegeman and Peter Rao of Rao Law Firm. And Dr. Mike K. Hoffman, the leader of the Mossa Art Restitution Initiative, based in Berlin and supported by the German government, Frey University, and us, the Mossa Foundation. This was the first public-private uh, partnership since World War II by the German government to recover, to identify, uh, locate, uh, identify, and validate, recover the uh, Nazi looted art. And it was also sponsored by the Minister of Culture for the Federal Republic of Germany, Monica Guters. And finally, of course, I would like to thank my brother, Hans Straub, who co-leads the Massa Foundation with me. And with that, uh, gratitude for our fellow public servants and their skills and their, their talent and their commitment to justice, I turn the podium over to Susan Friedlander. Thank you. Oh, thank you all. Um, several very hard acts to follow. Um, I would like to thank the Foundation and the FBI for their excellent work and hopefully their continued excellent work. And uh, thank you for acknowledging our role in this. Um, it's a small role, but one that we take very seriously and we feel it's a very significant one. I have just a very brief statement. Uh, the Arkell Museum has been part of making something right at long last. We do take that responsibility very seriously and to heart. I'd like to thank everyone for inviting me to join you today. It's a hard history to recognize and say we're delighted or pleased, but I truly am honored to be here in support of the Art Restitution Initiative and similar efforts. So thank you all. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Sarah. Thank you again, everybody. Um, I will, I am now just realizing I can't see the questions, so this was not the best place for me to be. Um, if you can just bring up the chat for me. We will OK, any questions, anybody? Yes, thanks. The approximate value of the building? Get Roger, I'm not sure if you could hear that, but the question was an approximate uh, value that you're expecting to get. I think the painting is probably valued in the uh, triple digit K area, but we're not sure until it goes to auction. Uh, Dan, I see your question. Uh, the question is, is it a crime to possess a stolen painting? Um, I'm just going to put our heads together here to see who from the federal agencies there. That's not a, uh, as easy of a question to answer. Thanks, Dan, for the question. The continued possession of a stolen painting when one knows that it is a stolen painting would be a violation of federal law. And I'd, I'd like to emphasize in this case, there was no evidence that the Arkell Museum knew when they took custody of the painting uh, back many years ago that it was stolen. Any other questions? All right, um, so just to be clear,
here for anybody who is on the call media-wise. Uh, again, Spectrum News is the pool camera. Um, within two hours of the completion here, they will get back and they will send you all links. You will be able to download the video into those links. This likely will be uh, broken up though, just to make it easier to send those. Um, so just make sure I have an email address for all of you and look for the email from Spectrum News. So if that is it for questions, thank you again everybody so much for joining us. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Stolen art. Um, yeah. Zach Magneto will pop up for that one. Yeah, Dan, thanks for that question. Um, that's not our procedures to constantly, you know, be checking museums. What we do is constantly receive tips from the public and our private sector partners. And if they're aware of stolen art that's out there, then we'll go out and address the issue. But we're not constantly checking museums. What we're constantly trying to do is put the information out there, let the public know that there is an art crimes program run by the FBI. We work in close coordination with uh, the Justice Department, in our case, the Northern District of New York. And uh, when that tip comes in, I think today's a good example to show that's something that we will aggressively pursue and run down and uh, try to get that, recover that stolen piece of art and get it back to its rightful owners. So thanks for that, Dan. Appreciate it. Good, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, from some management perspective, uh, Jeff Hoffman, Jeff Hoffman did a Masa relative paint this picture or purchase it? Uh, Roger, unless I'm speaking out of turn, that was a purchased item by the family, correct? Yes, uh, Rudolf Massa purchased it in uh, 1900. And uh, probably back out to you again, Roger, but Samantha is wondering uh, where the money will go. So if you can get into that with the foundation. The, Mas the three heirs will split the money equally, the private individual, the Massa Foundation, which I'm responsible for, the nonprofit um, philanthropic organization, and the University of Wisconsin Madison. Okay. Um, do we want? Can you make that for a second? Do we want to get into who discovered the painting? Who realized? Do we want to? Is that? Okay. Uh, Samantha, in terms of your question uh, regarding who discovered and verified. That's kind of all part of the process. We're gonna we're we're gonna not comment too much more on that. Um, in terms of how did the museum get the painting that was purchased by the museum, but lawfully, and that's how they by an came individual. by an individual, yeah, correct? And then given to the museum. And given to the museum. Okay. And then uh, Roger, one last one from Samantha. Um, you mentioned there were one thousand plus pieces out there. Can you verify that fifty have been recovered, or what are the numbers? I'm sorry, uh, verify that uh, three dozen uh, restitution efforts went to the recovery uh, or restitution to the rightful heirs of about 50 artifacts. Yes, art, art pieces and artifacts. Yes, zero. Excellent. A lot more, a lot more work to go.